What is up YouTube? This is Ryan Thomas and on this video we are going to be reviewing the Sony A5100 and deciding whether or not this is the camera for somebody who wants to start daily vlogging. So before we get into the review of the Sony A5100, I just want to give you guys a little bit of history, at least my history, with, uh, with this camera, why I chose it, etc. Um, so I purchased this camera about eight months ago. It was the camera I chose to start this YouTube channel and start daily vlogging. Um, and there were a number of reasons as to why I went with it. Um, reason one being, and it's probably the reason a lot of people choose cameras, is the price. Um, for about $600, um, I purchased this camera, uh, the body, which came along with a 16 to 55, uh, 3.5 to 5.6 uh, lens, um, which I'm actually filming on right now. So it really had the everything that you need to get started kind of package. Um, and I like that you had an interchangeable lens, so if I did purchase some glass further down the line, I can obviously swap out the lens. The second reason being, uh, it was really lightweight and compact. Um, it being a mirrorless camera, um, you don't have all the internal mechanisms that a DSLR would have, so you can cram a lot more into a smaller body. Um, so this makes the camera a lot more lightweight and a lot less inconspicuous if you're sort of filming some uh, innocent bystanders or filming out in public and you don't want people giving you some weird side eye. And another reason why I purchased it was obviously it has the flip screen, which is a necessity for anybody doing any kind of daily vlogging or vlogging in general, because you need that screen to be able to see yourself and frame up those shots while you're in selfie mode. So that is a crucial factor as to why I picked this camera. So you may be noticing that I made a couple DIY sort of hacks to this camera. Um, there are two big ones that you can see here. The microphone uh, windscreens and these rubber bands around the uh, camera strap. Um, the reason for the rubber bands around the camera strap, all Sony cameras come with these little hooks here that you put the camera strap um, through. Um, but if you don't have a camera strap on it, what happens is they end up shaking and rattling against the body and you get this really uh, distracting noise when you're kind of hand holding your camera. Um, so what I did was I wrapped uh, some rubber bands around these little uh, hooks here and it just keeps it from uh, hitting the body of the camera. They're almost like spring loaded. Now the second modification I made was uh, a little windscreen because this camera does not come with an uh, external mic uh, input jack. So you're basically at the mercy of the uh, onboard mics. So you might see these things that a lot of vloggers put on their Sony RX100s or G7X. They look like little um, furry carpets that it, they put over the mics. Um, I looked on Amazon, these things were $20. I thought that was kind of stupid for a, basically a glorified furry sticker. Um, so I just looked around my house and found some stuff that I had um, and made my own. The really nice thing as well is their Velcro. So at any point in time, you can take them off if you maybe are filming indoors and you don't necessarily need them. And if you guys have any questions about the modifications that I made to the Sony A5100, just leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer anybody who has anything about it and possibly we'll make a video um, if I get enough questions just about these modifications that I made. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the review of the Sony A5100. And I'm gonna do this like a pros and cons list. Um, and I will alternate between the two. Um, that way I don't appear biased by delivering all the pros at once uh, or all the cons at once or all the pros first and all the cons second. Um, just so it's a completely unbiased and uh, honest route. Well, it's a review, so I guess it's biased, right? Whatever, here we go. So the first pro, this camera has a flip screen, which is crucial for anybody, as I'm sure you know, who is making daily vlogs. You need it to frame up those selfie shots and get everything in the frame. Um, it's also really nice just to see um, how your autofocus is doing, if it's kind of going out of whack in and out. There's a number of reasons why a flip screen is crucial and it is a reason why I chose the Sony A5100. Con, this camera does not have a viewfinder. Why I bring this up is this monitor does not do very well in bright environments such as the beach. I filmed a couple times at the beach and the really, really bright sun um, made it next to impossible for me to see the screen. Um, so having the viewfinder and having something where you can cup your eye up to and see everything that you're getting in frame, 
how the light looks, how the exposure looks, etc., is definitely important. It does come with a feature that you can brighten um, everything on screen, but I will be honest with you, even that feature doesn't get it bright enough to see on a really bright day. You might end up having to kind of hold a towel or a shirt over your head to, uh, to see the screen in really bright environments. So that's the first con. Pro, this camera is really small and compact, which is amazing, especially with the kit lens that it comes with. I could throw this thing in my pocket. Not my jeans pocket, but if I'm wearing a coat, I could easily throw it in a coat pocket and have both my hands free. Um, to do whatever I need to do. It just makes it a really less cumbersome camera. You're not constantly slamming your ginormous A7S II down on tables to, so you can grab your groceries or whatever. By being able to throw this camera in your pocket, it just makes life a lot easier. It makes daily vlogging a lot easier. It's just easier. Now the next con, I'm sure you have heard if you've done your research from a number of people reviewing basically any Sony camera, but a huge problem in the Sony line is overheating. So with the A5100, I've only encountered an overheating issue twice, and that was when I was filming um, my cooking videos. Reason being is I just did really long takes of upwards of like 15 minutes, um, and when I got to about the 15 minute mark, that's when the camera started running into trouble and started to overheat. Um, basically what happens is the camera gives you an overheat warning, will shut down about 30 seconds later, and you have to wait until the camera completely cools down to uh, start filming again. If you don't wait until it cools down, the next take you might get seven minutes before it overheats, then the next take you might get four, and so on and so forth, um, until you're left with basically just a boiling hot camera that can't do anything. Um, so overheating is a huge issue on this camera. Um, although with daily vlogging, I don't think it is a huge problem because generally with daily vlogging, you're doing really short takes of only about 30 seconds, if anything, at least in the style that I vlog in. So that's an issue if you're somebody who's expecting to do a lot of really long takes. Another pro, this camera has really good snappy autofocus. Um, I'm assuming it's a combination of the lens and the camera. I'm not a super tech nerd. Um, but this camera's autofocus did really good. Uh, whenever I was filming in selfie mode, it always really quickly snapped onto my face. Didn't do any sort of like toggling back and forth to the background and jumping around. It always stayed really locked onto my face and did a really good job of it. So autofocus, if you're gonna be shooting in autofocus, which I'm assuming you're gonna be doing if you're a daily vlogger. So autofocus on this camera is really great and something to consider if you're somebody who's gonna be daily vlogging. A con, this camera has no external mic input. Um, so you're basically forced to use the onboard mics. Um, and the problem with this is, at least for me, I live in New York City, there's a lot of noise. And this camera does a really good job of getting all of that noise. I don't think the camera mics are pointed forward. So what ends up happening is you'll hear my voice, but it's drowned out by subways and taxis and fire engines and so on and so forth. They're just the general noise of the city. So not having that external mic input is definitely something to consider. This camera actually doesn't even have a hot shoe um, or a cold shoe for you to put your external flash or external mic, etc., cetera, into. Um, so that is something to really consider um, if you're buying this camera. Now my last pro is this camera did really well in low light situations. Um, I'm often filming at night after work or on the weekends at the bars when it's dimly lit and this camera handles it really well. Whenever you're filming in those low light situations like a dimly lit bar, you're not gonna get a lot of noise in this camera which is great. It's not gonna be distracting for your viewers and it just keeps a really nice clean look. So that is one pro for this camera. Now I do have a few more cons to give for this camera. Um, the cons do outweigh the pros but it's ultimately up to you guys to decide whether or not this is the camera for you. So the next con is, for me at least, there weren't enough physical buttons on this camera. I wish I had dedicated buttons that I could control the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, etc. Also, it'd be nice to have some buttons where you could set some custom functions. Unfortunately, on this camera, that's not the case. With such a compact body, I assume they couldn't fit a lot of buttons on here. So you're really limited as to what you can control physically um, on this camera. 
And this kind of coincides with the deep menu diving. Um, because there's limited buttons, you do have to dive into the menu to change a lot of the settings um, that you'll need to change while filming or shooting photographs on this camera. Con for this camera is the menu system. Um, Sony cameras are notorious for having really crazy and windy um, menus. Um, you'll often find yourself doing really deep menu dives to change something as simple as frame rate. I often flip between 24 and 60 frames per second and oftentimes I miss my shot because I spent 30 seconds digging through my menu to switch to 60 frames per second. So that is my review of the Sony A5100. If you guys have any questions about this camera or this review, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. If you want to see what footage, test footage, all the things filmed looks like on this camera, click on my channel and feel free to watch all 36 videos that I have filmed strictly on this camera and a GoPro, but mostly on this camera. Also be sure to smash Hulk, Super Saiyan, Slam Dunk, Charlie Murphy, that like button. Hit it, don't quit it. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. I currently have 14 subscribers. I'd love to get it up to 15 this year. That would be amazing. Just get one more subscriber. That being said, adios mis amigos. Peace and love. Take it easy. Text your mom. Call her back. Peace.